Hey, what's happening guys? I have got a couple of the uh, D1 Mini shields in that I ordered. I'll take a look at them today and set up a quick project with Blink. So the first one that we've got here is a DHT11 sensor shield for the D1 Mini. And of course it fits in, you know, the exact size. Really nice. And if you look here on the left side, I'm sorry, on the right side, I don't know my left from my right today. D4, see how it has that little mark? That is telling you the output from the DHT11 is actually on D4, see? And there's a little info right there as well. So that's one of the shields I got. The other one is this battery shield. Now it came with a, I think it's called a Wakara plug. I don't have any batteries that use the Wakara plug, so I removed it and I soldered on this type of plug right here because since I've been flying RC planes, helicopters, and all that for a very long time, I have a very high number of these type of batteries. So that'll go into there really nice. Now I have permanently soldered the battery shield to the D1 Mini because that's how I plan on using this. And then I kind of kludged uh, this header on top of here because I have another two more shields coming. So first up is the, uh, the DHT11 sensor. And we'll just pop her in there like that. And then we can put in a battery. Let me zoom out here a little bit. We can put in a battery and be good to go. But first, let's go take a look at these on eBay and take a quick look at the code. Then we'll come back, build the Blink app, and we'll put this thing outside and uh, give it a test. Alright, here's the first shield. This is the DHT11 temperature and humidity shield. Now, I ordered these two shields from within the US because I wanted them quickly and I'm impatient. So, if you order them from, you know, across the oceans, one hung low then, um, you can get them quite a bit cheaper. But, I mean, what. <laughs> There's not really much more to say about this one. It's a DHT uh, 11 on a shield. So yeah, that's that one. Now the other one here is the lithium battery charger shield. And you can see here, come on. There's the TP54, what is that, 7G. That's your battery protection charging IC. It's got a micro USB here and then this Wakara type port here which I have conveniently removed so we won't be needing that. But there you go. Alright, next up let's take a look at the code. So here's the code for the self-contained D1 Mini with DHT11 and a LiPo. First thing, I've got this defined blink print serial. After you get your program running, you can just comment that out and you won't need it anymore. Includes SPI. You know what, that was in the blink example, so I left it, but nothing here is using SPI that I'm aware of, so you can get rid of it. ESP8266 Wi-Fi. You're going to want to keep that one as well as this one and the DHT11 or you'll be in trouble. Next is your Wi-Fi setup. So you're going to need your authorization token, your SSID, and your password. These are not mine. But if you know what that's from, let me know in the comments down below and I'll give you a heart. Okay, remember I told you on that shield the DHT is on D4, so we just need to tell it that there, and tell it what type 
of sensor we're using, whether it's an 11, a 22, or a 21. Then we have our DHT uh, creation of the instance called lowercase DHT using the arguments DHT pin and DHT type. Then we're going to use the blink timer. And what that's going to do is allow us to set the frequency at which it's going to push the data to the blink app. We're creating a function here called send sensor. And we say float h equals dht read humidity. Very simple. And float t equals dht read temperature. And if you want it in Fahrenheit, put a true within the parentheses. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> then we have this uh, thing here to make sure the DHT sensor is working. If not, you're going to get an error. Then we're going to send our values. Blink dot virtual right to pin V5 H for humidity. Blink dot virtual right to pin V6 for temperature. Now here we have our setup. There's our debug. Again, you can comment that out when everything's working. Blink begin with our auth SSID and password, which you set right here. And then DHT begin. And then this is our interval. It's set for one second, so it sends um, your data every second. You can send it for, uh, you know, once every 10 minutes. Next, we have the loop. And this is where the Blink app is so awesome. Blink run, timer run. That's it, Fort Pitt. There ain't nothing else. So, Alibaba, that's pretty simple. All right, let's put it all together and light that candle. All right, I uploaded the code and I created a Blink app. Hold on, let me make this a little bit brighter. There we go. Oh, you don't want to focus on that? What's up with that? Okay. There we go. So, if you haven't played around with Blink before, it's uh, pretty easy. So, we have um, our humidity on virtual pin 5 and our temperature on virtual pin 6. You can just touch these. You need to see we set it for V5 humidity, gave it a color. And this one, V6 temperature, made it red. And there it is, and it'll push a new value out every uh, one second. So I guess the next thing to do is to unhook this from the computer all right and plug in a battery Whoa, that just got instantly hot. Okay, so the good news is it didn't kill the DHT11 or the Wemos, and it's still working. The bad news is, I don't know what the hell happened to that board. I don't know if I killed it when I soldered it, or if it just had a dead short on its own. Because I scratched off a couple of places, and everywhere I touch is, is a dead short to ground. So, I don't know if I can recommend that board. I mean, guaranteed. 
it's a 50 50 shot that you know i screwed the pooch on this one but uh without a little bit more investigation uh it's impossible to tell so i will reserve recommending this uh battery board i got another one on order uh, when it comes in i'll let you guys know the the dht 11 nah, flawless so there's that. All right. I'm out. Peace.